This is the Sergio Rodriguez Show. Welcome, everybody, to the Sergio Rodriguez Show, September 15th, 2020. It's great to be back talking sports and a little bit of politics once we get going. First of all, sponsoring the Sergio Rodriguez Show, that's always important because that's how we pay the bills. Triangle Inc. Triangle Inc. is the leading manufacturer in screen printing industry, delivering the finest inks for over 35 years. Check them out at triangleinc.com or call them at 1-800-524-1592. Paramus Driving School. Safety and professionalism begins with Paramus Driving School. Serving the North Jersey area like no other. Contact them at paramusdrivingschool.com or call them at 201-986-8300. Week one of the NFL. Brother, let me tell you something. Let's get started with Monday night. And, and you know what? The best thing about Monday night is that I got to sit there and watch those New York Giants. Oh, those New York Giants. The more they do the more they do wrong. Let's start with the running back. The punt returner, like I like to call him, because that's a college stat. You know, they invent that stat for Saquon Barkley in the NFL. Every week in the NFL Network, I see the final tallies. Zeke, 113 yards rushing. Henry, 152 yards rushing. Gurley, 113 yards rushing. Barkley, 142 all-purpose yards. You know what those purpose yards mean? You can't run the ball. He's a good football player, but he's an average running back. 77 yards rushing per game, 44 yards receiving. That, those are his averages. And yesterday, 15 carries on six yards. You know, I saw something real interesting about Saquon Barkley. You realize that he only has 300 yards more rushing than Lamar Jackson. That's incredible. That's incredible. Do not talk to me about him being an elite running back until he can average 100 yards a season. Just one time. 100 yards for a season. Just one time. Give me a 1,600-yard season. None of this 1,300 yards. You know what that is? 77 to 80 yards rushing a season. That's, again, you could find anybody to do that, and he's going to demand big money coming soon. Daniel Jones also got off to, I guess, the kind of start that he had the last couple of years. You know, or not the last couple of years, last year and this year because this is his second year, but his last couple of starts have been, again, the same thing. He shows you flashes, particularly throwing the ball down the middle of the field, even yesterday, pushed the ball down the field early, threw a nice touchdown pass. But again, the two interceptions, he didn't fumble yesterday. But so far in his career, 24 touchdowns, two interceptions last year, 18 fumbles. Yesterday again, the two interceptions. The turnover bug is going to be an issue for the Giants if he's going to continue to do that because you can't consistently turn the ball over in this league and expect to win. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And week one on Monday night, it just reared his ugly head again, especially after a 19-play drive when they were about to, to score. Again, ill-advised throw, probably should have just eaten it, eaten it, gets hit, ball goes up in the air, interception, after that, the Steelers put the game away. It is what it is. Steelers are pretty good. Giants are what they are. They're a five-win team. They could have probably stolen that game last night. I felt they could have. But at the end of the day, they're 0-1. And listen, they're a five-win team. The nightcap last night, the Denver Broncos. I'll tell you, look, Denver has a lot of positives going for them right now. One, they're very young. Two, they're very talented. That's a good combination. Young and talented is very good. 
Drew Locke, he's going to be good. Drew Locke is going to be very good. The question is, can they consistently make plays over 16 games this year being so young? I think that's going to be a challenge. Last night, they played without their number one receiver. And they still were pretty good. By the way, that was one of the six picks that we gave this week on the Sergio Rodriguez show. We went three and three. We're going to speak about that at the end of the show. Um, But Denver was one of those teams that covered. Look, it probably shouldn't have been that close. Texans, uh, not the Texans. I'm like, God, listen to me. I'm I'm, I'm already having a brain fart uh, uh, on the first show. The Titans missed a bunch of field goals, probably should have pulled away, but Denver also had another scoring opportunity where they got stopped on fourth and goal. Now, let's go to the end of that game, and let's talk about Denver coach Vic Fangio. Not calling that timeout, not calling that timeout, when Henry got that first down with about a minute 27 left, and not using that cost them about a good 25, 30 seconds of time that, to be fair, because of who the kicker they have is and where they're playing became a huge issue. Understand that you're playing in Mile High Stadium where the ball is going to carry off the foot a lot more. I mean, 60-yard field goals are not easy anywhere, but if it's easier somewhere, it's there in the altitude. Fangio not calling that timeout killed any chance that they had of even coming back to get the game-winning field goal. I mean, they get they ended up getting the ball back with 17 seconds. I mean, that was just terrible, terrible on his part. And you know what his excuse was for that? which I thought was a terrible one, his excuse was that he didn't want them to get closer because the kicker had been struggling, because Gaskowski had, Gaskowski had been struggling. Look, you have to figure that in that situation, the kicker's going to make the kick. Your job is to give your team an opportunity, and that opportunity was not given. That loss... I'm not going to say it was totally on him. But he contributed a lot in not giving his young quarterback an opportunity to have that moment. Maybe getting the ball back with 38, 40 seconds instead of having just 17 seconds. Let's go back to the Sunday night game. The Cowboys lose a tough one. 2017 to the LA Rams. And you know what? It's the same old Dak Prescott. Prescott has a top five offensive line. A top five wide receiving core. A top three, if not the best running back in the game. And you score three points the entire second half? Three points. Three points the entire second half. Not to mention you only scored 17 for the game. We spoke about this last week in one of our clips. The Texans gave Deshaun Watson $39 million a year. $39 million a year. Prescott's lined up to make the same amount of money. If the Cowboys give Prescott that type of money, they can just get ready for 10 more years of futility. Because again, I've been saying this for a while now. While Dak is a good football player, while Dak is very durable, he is not an elite level quarterback. And you can't in this league, when you have a salary cap, and you need to pay for depth, you cannot, give a quarterback who is not named Rodgers, Brady, or Mahomes damn near 30 or 40% of the salary cap. 
You just can't. You just can't. The Rams now, on the other hand, the Rams are going to get you early in games this year. The Rams do a lot of misdirection plays. The Rams do a lot of trickery. They have a very innovative head coach in McVay, but as the game went on, you could see that if they can't fool you, they're not going to score. They just are not. And that's going to be an issue for them as the season goes on, but they're off to a 1-0 and start in a hard division, and, it, and, and I'll tell you what, they are probably going to be hurt more by that Arizona win than they think because that just means that there's another team to contend with in that division. And we'll speak about Arizona uh, as we go on here in this segment. Uh, Thursday night, going back now Thursday night to another game that was really, that was really again, about the quarterback. Deshaun Watson had, it's funny because I had just put up a clip on Instagram about how paying him was the crime of the century. And he came out that same night and put up basically a performance of a $12 million quarterback. He put up some garbage stats at the end of the game when the when basically the game was out of reach. He got sacked four more times if you're keeping count at home. Again, Deshaun Watson is what he is, and he showed it that night. He was playing across the field from a legitimate $500 million quarterback. By the way, that quarterback, that $500 million quarterback, is 8-0 and in his career in September. 26 touchdowns, zero interceptions, zero interceptions. Kansas City this year, I will tell you, is going to have finally has a, 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 a consistent running game in terms of, I expect this young kid to stay healthy. Uh, Edward Hilaire, I expect him to stay healthy. There was always questions. Um, and, well, even last year after the whole hunt situation and then, you know, him getting, uh, thrown off the team and, but, but I think they're going to have a consistent running game this year, which is going to help them a lot and take a lot of pressure off, uh, off Patrick Mahomes to wrap up something about that game. I will tell you that one thing that I was impressed about was that. David Johnson, and I'll tell you, uh, my, my former co-host on the Sideline View, Chris, Chris Oliveira, uh, told me that he felt Chris John, uh, David Johnson had more left in the tank. And, and I'll tell you, I was skeptical. He looked good the other night. I don't know if it's going to last for 16 games, but he looked good the other, you know, he looked good the other night. The game of the week in terms of, uh, in terms of, ratings and in terms of importance for the league was the Tampa Bay New Orleans game. And you know, Brady <laughs> Brady wasn't that bad. I mean, I know he he had the pick six and you know, he wasn't 2012 Tom Brady, but he wasn't that bad. Look. Playing in New Orleans game 1 you have not had a traditional camp in terms of uh, preseason games and, 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 and the work that you had in, in, in March to be able to put in all the offense and get the timing. Tough opener to go to New Orleans and try to beat those guys there. I understand there are no fans so it's not the same as, as in years past where you're going there and you're dealing with the craziness in New Orleans. But, you know, Brady wasn't bad. I thought, I thought he did enough where if they're playing anybody else, they probably win. They probably win. Um, so with that said, I think that moving forward, 
if they can get to five and two, six and three, I think they'll be fine to make the playoffs. I know a lot of people think that they were going to go to the Super Bowl. I never thought that they were going to beat this elite level Super Bowl winning team just because Brady was there. Because, you know, I didn't think Brady was great last year. Look, he's 43. I mean, it is what it is. Um, they have a lot of help there. But Brady did a lot of his damage over the last couple of years, dinking and dunking the ball to backs and receivers. And 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 this team's going to want to push the ball down the field. So we'll see. I mean, he made a couple of nice throws, but but we'll you know, we'll see how that how that ends up being. New Orleans is good. They're just good. And look, they won yesterday against a tough team, and Breeze had a pedestrian game. So if they can do that, they're gonna they're gonna be fine. The other team that really surprised me at how they played yesterday was the 49ers. You know, losing a game to Arizona is not as bad as people would think. Those divisional games sometimes they really, you know, they can go either way. Teams have better scouting reports. They have better, um, they have a better idea of what you're going to do and how to defend you. But coming off the Super Bowl, I felt that it was important for them to get off starting, uh, started uh, on the right foot, especially because Seattle's good. The Rams are good. And you know that that division... 10 wins, 11 wins might not win it. And when you lose a game to Arizona early, that could be the difference between a wild card game on the road or a home game in the playoffs. I'll tell you what, what they do have to solve. Jimmy Garoppolo has to complete passes to his receivers. I mean, it seems to me that every time I'm watching the 49ers play, the receivers don't touch the ball. He is going to have to start using that receiving core. Now, now look, Emmanuel Sanders is gone, so I don't even know how they're going to handle that. But if they can't get the ball down the field, I don't know if they are as good as they were last year defensively to carry essentially the offense the way that they did last year at times. So that's something to keep an eye on as uh, as we move forward. A shocker to most people this week was the Redskins beating the Eagles. You know, the Eagles, I'll tell you, have major issues, major issues. One offensive line is in shambles. I mean, they gave up eight sacks yesterday to the Redskins. But they have continuity issues. And they have, I mean, look, they lost one of the best guards in the game, a top three guard in the game. So you knew that that was going to be a problem. But they looked they looked just lost yesterday trying to block the, 40, uh, trying to block the Redskins in that game. They have issues at receiver. They're not making plays. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I've been a big supporter of Carson Wentz. Through the injuries, through the playoff misses because of injuries, the eye test has always told me that Carson Wentz is really good. But that game was on him yesterday. Up 17-0 against a team that's probably only going to win five or six games. Although after watching them, they probably, they looked better coached. Ron Rivera had those guys ready to play. I know my guy Lake Lewis over at Sports Journey is going to tell me that the Redskins are going to win nine or ten games, but I I believe they're going to be a five-six win team. The Redskins basically took that game from Wentz, and Wentz helped. Wentz was the reason. That loss yesterday has to be on Carson Wentz. He's got to be better. You cannot, cannot, when you are as good as he is, 
a top seven quarterback in the NFL, you cannot give that game up to a Redskins team that you had dead to rights up 17 nothing. Now, oh, speaking dead to rights, let's talk about my man Mitch Trubisky. You know, I'm not a big defender of Mitch Trubisky because I'm not one of these guys that that thinks that Mitch Trubisky is going to be a great quarterback in the future, but I do feel that he's taken a lot of heat, a lot of heat. And realistically, the guy's won a lot of games for the Bears since he got there. And yesterday, he was bad for three quarters, make no mistakes about it, but three touchdown passes, zero interception, huge, huge comeback, huge comeback to get the Bears off to a 1-0 and start. And you know what? That win yesterday could go a long way, or on Sunday, I'm sorry, could go a long way to basically propelling Mitch Trubisky and the Bears in that division because the Vikings showed us they're not that good. Green Bay showed us that Aaron Rodgers is on his redemption tour. And Detroit is what they are. The Bears could win that division. They really could. Now, let's talk about Matt Patricia. (laughs) I'll tell you. Matt Patricia has nine. Nine wins since he was named the head coach in Detroit. That's incredible. I I think he's something like 9-23 and or something like that. That's incredible on in itself. Because I think they fired the last coach for being nine and seven, if I'm not, I mean, Matt Patricia, just like a lot of these former new England coaches, they get credit for what Belichick does. I mean, look at the guy in New York. Now judge, he's going to get, well, he got that job on the coattails of being Belichick's assistant. And now he's there. He's going to win five games this year. How good are they going to be the following year? I mean, it's the NFL. You never know. But the Giants over the last 10 years have proven that they are basically, I mean, other than the Browns, they've been the worst team in the NFL. And Matt Patricia is basically coaching his way out of Detroit and back to being assistant (laughs) in In New England. I'll tell you, that division is very winnable for the Bears. But Aaron Rodgers, my Lord, Aaron Rodgers. Four touchdowns, 364 yards passing. Devontae Adams had a a huge game yesterday. 14 for 156 and a touch. Green Bay, if they stay healthy will be good all year. But the Bears can steal that division. The Bears can steal that division. Russell Wilson was finally allowed to play going over to Seattle in that game with Atlanta. Another one of the six picks. You know, and let me say something about that. I gave Atlanta in that game plus three on Wednesday when I put out the picks. When that line closed, Atlanta was a one-point favorite. No way the Sergio Rodriguez show would have put their stamp of approval on that game. That took us from being possibly 3-2 and to being 3-3. and But, well, you know, we're not going to cry about it. We'll move forward with that. But Russell Wilson was just spectacular yesterday. You know, he shows every week why he's the most underrated player in football over the last 20 years. Just gives you everything you need. He's a winner, and he carries mediocre offensive talent every year across the finish line. Look, Atlanta, they are what we thought they were going to be, a team that could score some points. I mean, Matt Ryan threw for like 450 and two touches. They were coming from behind. And I think they're going to be able to score. But they had three receivers 
they had three receivers that that caught over 100 yards and they had a lot of fancy stats, no substance. Atlanta is going to be in what I believe is the ultimate dogfight next week with the Cowboys because one of those two teams is going to be 0-2. One of those two teams is going to be 0-2 with playoff aspirations. And the Cowboys have to go to Seattle week three, if I'm not mistaken. So if you're the Cowboys, you cannot lose that game. And if you're Atlanta at 0-2 with New Orleans, Seattle, the winner of the NFC East, I don't know if there's going to be many playoff spots if you start playing for a wild card week three. That's going to be that's going to be a tough one for them. Speaking of tough, is it tough or what to watch the Cleveland Browns? The only thing that's funny about watching the Cleveland Browns is that I get to see OBJ every week. Every week, Odell Beckham, every week with his 22 yards receiving, his zero touchdowns, losing follows that guy. Bat karma follows that guy. And a new home will follow that guy. You can rest assured he will be on two or three more teams over the next couple of years because he is part of the problem there and not the solution. Lamar Jackson picked up where he left off in, 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 in that game where he left off last year as the MVP of the league. I mean, another great game. You know, but the fact about Lamar Jackson is that everybody figured out already that he's a really good football player. I'm not going to call him a great quarterback just yet because I don't think he's that. I just think he's a great football player. But no one's going to care until he does it in the playoffs. I, nobody's going to really care until he actually goes into the playoffs against a defense that's going to be prepared for him to throw the ball, force him to throw from the pocket, and he makes some plays. Until that happens, he can put up these gaudy numbers during the regular season, especially in that division, but nobody's going to care about that. Uh, Buffalo. A team that I expect to win the NFC, uh, the AFC East got off to a good start. Josh Allen, again, great game. Used nine different receivers. Buffalo looked good. I I, I said it. Buffalo was uh, a team that I said earlier in the week that was going to just take care of the uh, of the Jets easy. Too many good players on defense, and the Jets are just weak. Um, we have breaking news, breaking news. Gary Sanchez just hit a home run for the Yankees. For all you Gary Sanchez haters today, you got to stay quiet. The man just hit a ball out. <laughs> we'll come back to, we'll come back to baseball later on in the show. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Buffalo is going to be tough to beat in that division. New England also got off to a nice start. Um, they didn't do much on offense, but you don't need much offense to beat the Miami Dolphins these days. Joe Burrow, the number one pick in the draft. You know, not bad. Not bad for his debut. You know, he had a go-ahead score called back at the end for a pass interference. And, um, and then the kicker, in typical Cincinnati fashion, misses the kick that would have tied the game. You know... He's going to be okay. Joe Burrow showed us that he can play in this league. And I'll tell you, another must-win game for that division comes up on Thursday night. The Browns have to win that game. If they're going to entertain any type of season this year, they cannot go 0-2, especially with the Steelers showing that they're going to be better. And again, the amount of teams that are going to be in the AFC that are going to actually be pretty good, the Raiders are going to be in the mix now, they're going to have a tough time making the playoffs if they start off 0-2. And this was supposed to be the year where the Browns actually made that jump. So we're going to uh, we're gonna see what happens. But Thursday night becomes a big game. But if Joe Burrow can win that game for Cincinnati against the in-state rival, things are going to get interesting in 
the NFL. Let's talk sponsors. That's very important because, hey, those are the things that keep us employed. Lucimer Auto Body, located at 27 Austin Street in Newark, provides top-of-the-line service to make your collision experience as smooth as possible. Go to lucimer.com, that's L-U-S-A-M-E-R.com, or call them at 973-824-0113. By the way, my boy Paul owns Lucimer Auto Body, one of the best guys you will ever meet. J.J. Farber and Lopman, providers of wholesale insurance at competitive rates for small and medium businesses. Go to JJFL.com or get an instant quote by calling 844-502-8923. M&J Luxury Incorporated, for the most unique experience in the medical transportation business, call M&J Located in New York City with over 1,000 cars at your disposal. Call them at 718-278-2222 or at 914-484-7264. Great to get started here. Great to get started here with you guys. Um, Talking NFL. And, you know, something very important happened in the world of basketball yesterday. Giannis Antetokounmpo met with the owners of the Milwaukee Bucks to discuss basically his future with the organization. The Bucks owners, and, and this is going to be a two-part situation here. The Bucks owners promised him that they will do everything above and beyond the salary cap or the, the luxury tax, I should say. To get him the help that he needs to bring a championship to Milwaukee. Here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. And here's why eventually he's going to have to. uh, He's going to have to. uh, He's going to have to leave. There's just no way. There's just no way around it. Who is going to go there? Who's going to go there? You know, the problem that LeBron James had in Cleveland is going to be the same problem that he's going to have, that Giannis is going to have in Milwaukee. Who's going to go there to play with you? When LeBron came back to Cleveland, remember that Kyrie was there They had just drafted Wiggins and they were able to trade him for love. But no one is going to go there. First of all, I was looking at the free agent list over the next two years. There is not a difference making free agent that you're going to get there. Your best bet would probably be to try to trade for someone like Bradley Beal. But that's probably about it that you can probably trade for to get there without messing up all the other pieces that are there. I just don't see how the Milwaukee Bucks will be able to bring another player there. Now, here's why I said this is twofold. Because you have to bring not only another player that's good, but you have to bring another player that's going to do what Antetokounmpo cannot do over the last four minutes of games, which is put the ball in the bucket from the outside. In order to get one of those guys, 
you're going to have to make a trade. There's no one out there that's coming. And again, you're not going to be able to sign anybody even if somebody were to be available. Unfortunately for the Milwaukee Bucks, I think their best bet is going to be to trade onto Tacumpo and try to rebuild the team without a superstar. And I get that. You can't win in the NBA without that. But don't forget that this is a business. And at the end of the day, if I were the owners of the Bucks, I got to sit back and I got to say, okay, am I going to win a championship with Giannis and the way the team is put together right now? Especially with Brooklyn getting Durant back next year. Golden State comes back healthy. LeBron's probably have another has another year or two. The Clippers are going to be good again. Chances are you're not going to win a championship with Giannis. The way the team is set up now. You're not going to be able to get another player either. So, eventually you're going to lose him. I would rather trade him, get enough pieces that are going to keep me as a viable 4-5 seed every year for the next six years in the East, maybe catch lightning in a bottle a year or two the way the Heat have this year, and maybe I make enough money for my business, which again, this is what it is. Unfortunately, that's the way they're going to have to think. I, I just don't see any way, unless they get totally just damn lucky in the draft. But how lucky can you get drafting towards the end of the draft? That's going to be an issue. That's going to be a major issue for, for these guys in Milwaukee. And, and I feel bad for them because that's one of those that's one of those organizations that you root for because they've done it the right way and they they got their guy and they got, you know, they they, they got Middleton and but I, I just cannot see it happening. I, I just I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. And, and it's and it and it's bad, but I, I just can't see it happening. Fairfield Physical Therapy Center, located in the Fairfield Commons, Suite G106. Owned and operated by Justin Solotov, who has 20 years of experience in the field of orthopedic physical therapy. Call Justin at 973-276-1313 and stop living with pain and discomfort. Epic Car Service is recognized as the number one car service in New York City by medical transportation standards. Located in the Bronx, New York. Epic Car Service will make your commute a safe and comfortable experience. Call Epic at 718-401-3742 or call them at 844-666-6278. Stan Sports Center, one of the oldest and most recognized sporting goods stores in New Jersey, located on Washington Street in Hoboken and in Saddlebrook, Stans has been recognized as a historical institution. Call Stans at 201-773-6891 or go on their website at stansportsctr.com. Tell my man Dan that Sergio at the Sergio Rodriguez show sent you. You know, Major League Baseball is going to be using four hubs for their for their playoffs. They announced that they're going to use um, Houston and Texas, LA and St. Diego as their four hubs, essentially as, uh, you know, like a bubble type NBA bubble type hockey, the way the NHL did that, you know, to make sure that they don't have any interruptions during the, during the playoffs or that they don't have any issues, uh, like they've had because baseball has really been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, 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 they've been very overly cautious in my opinion, the way that they've handled, you know, the, the, the small outbreaks that have turned, that, that have come up during the, 
during the season. I mean, I mean, they're canceling series, you know, because, you know, the guy who was carrying the bags tested positive for for COVID. I mean, like, so I could see why they would definitely want to do this, even though they really, you know, chose not to do this from the beginning. Um, you know, and, and I'll tell you, I think this sucks. It sucks for guys like, for teams like Toronto. It sucks for teams like the Marlins who find themselves, you know, in, in the mix to make the playoffs to not have the opportunity to at least play at home. Now, granted, you don't have fans. We get that. But look, there's no denying that certain teams, based on their style of play, play better at home. Pitchers pitch better on their mound. The grass gets cut different. Artificial turf comes into play. There's a lot of factors that go into play in that. Not to mention that at first they were going to play all three. The, 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 the higher seed was going to be at home for the short three-game series. Those things are very, very now meaningless. Does it really matter now if you finish eighth? I mean, okay, I get maybe in the National League it might because you're going to run into the Dodgers. But, you know, in the American League, it seems like the teams that could probably be good in a short series, the Yankees with Cole, Houston with Verlander, um, you know, um, not, not not Verlander, with... with uh, um, with the offense that they have, um, I was thinking, I was thinking pitching, but they're built with their offense in 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 a short series. They could be tough because they have a lot of guys that could be, you know, a problem. The Yankees with Cole in one game situation or in a three game situation, they're going to throw them first. Those teams are, are basically at the bottom now, so they could run into Tampa Bay or the White Sox early, but in the National League. That eight seed is an issue, but other than that, if you're going to be playing in a dome type, in a, in a in a bubble type setting where you're on a neutral field, I mean, does it really matter? Does it really matter? You know, so I think that that is a that is a problem that you know for teams that. You know, I feel bad for because they had a good opportunity, I think, this year to make an impact, um, and that's gone th by the wayside. That's gone by the wayside um, because that's not that's not going to happen anymore. Um, you know, and like I said, the Yankees with Cole in a short series are going to be a problem. You know, Houston doesn't have Verlander; he's still out with that injury, but. A team like, like them who has, with Granke at the top of his game, could be a problem. Um, hmm. Trying to think who else could become a problem in those series like that for a top seed. The problem is that I don't respect the top seeds in the American League. And I don't think any one of the, of the teams that is going to be a low seed in the National League is going to get the Dodgers. Um, in any event, that's I, I, I just feel bad. I, I saw that, and I, and I feel that that's going to be that's going to be a problem in a bad way, in a bad way for the game because I thought it could have been a great a great parody for for those. Uh, for those teams, like I said, that are, you know, um, not traditional playoff teams. You know, the last couple of minutes here, I want to take to speak about the NFL games coming up next week. And, you know, we're going to obviously put our picks up. I'm going to wait probably till Friday this week. I'm going to try to allow the lines to move a little, unless we obviously like something on the Thursday night show, but I'll give you a little preview basically of each game here. Cleveland is at home. They're a six point favorite versus Cincinnati. Look, make no mistake about it. 
Cleveland has to win this game. They have to win this game. Um, if they don't, listen, right now, Baker Mayfield is probably looking at having more commercials than wins this year. That's going to be a problem. The Rams are a one-point favorite in Philadelphia. And, you know, Philadelphia's probably going to end up winning this game because teams are never as bad as they are when they lose, and they're never as good as they are when they win. And the one thing that I that I said earlier in the show about the Rams is going to stand true in this game. If they can pull away early, they will be fine in any game. But if they're in a one-score game after halftime, I don't know how many games they're going to win this year because they just they need to trick you to move the ball, and that's an and that's an issue. The Buccaneers are a nine-point favorite at home versus Carolina. I expect Tampa Bay to roll. Carolina, huh, just Carolina has a tough, 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 tough time playing defense. And I, I just can't see them holding Tampa Bay to under 30. Denver travels to Pittsburgh. after, a, And that's why it was so important for Denver to try to get that win early. And they had that game last night. They could have won it. And Pittsburgh's going to be a, well, they're a seven and a half point favorite now. Are they going to cover that number? I don't know. I got to look a little bit more careful into this. But that's a tough game for Denver to go on the road and have to play that game. Dallas is a four and a half point favorite at home against Atlanta. There's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. And that's a weird line. Four and a half is a weird number. I've always found number the number between four and six a little weird. Um, what amounts to a must-win game for both teams. The 49ers travel east to play the Jets, and they're a seven-point favorite. Uh, I would tell you that the Jets offensively are a mess. The 49ers should come in here and get the job done. That is a one o'clock game, and you know how that works. Teams from the West, 1 o'clock games coming to the East, tend to struggle. Buffalo goes on the road as a 5.5-point favorite to play Miami. And you know what? I don't know if Buffalo's good enough just yet to lay that many points in a divisional game. That's a game that I'm going to have to look at closely. Indianapolis is a 3-point favorite at home against the Vikings. And again, the Vikings need to win. Must-win game for the Vikings on the road. Indianapolis in a must-win game. Surprising Indianapolis is a favorite after losing to Jacksonville. That's a very interesting line. This is another line to keep an eye on if you're uh, if you're a better. Green Bay is, gonna, is a six-point favorite against Detroit at home. This game could get ugly. It is a divisional game, and I get that, but there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. And I'll tell you what, if there's a lot of points scored, you can rest assured that Green Bay is going to get their share. The Bears are a five and a half point favorite at home against the Giants. <sighs> I'll tell you, if Mitch has one of those bad games, you could get six, seven turnovers in this game, especially with, with that Bears defense. Tennessee is a nine point favorite at home against Jacksonville. That one could get a little ugly, too. Jacksonville played better than we thought they were going to play. Everybody thought they were tanking this year based on some of the moves that they were making. But I'll tell you, they played hard, and they got that dub. I, you know what? That's probably why I like Tennessee, because I thought that line just, and again, I'm looking at these lines for the first time right now. I would have expected that line to be closer to a touchdown based on the fact that Tennessee was not sharp yesterday and Jacksonville played better than we thought. But the fact that it's that high would probably lead me to believe that Tennessee is the play. Arizona's a six and a half point favorite at home against Washington. Another tricky line. Let's see if Washington can muster up something on the road two weeks in a row. Baltimore is a seven-point favorite at Houston. Now, here we go, Deshaun. 
Here's your opportunity. Another opportunity against a quality team at home, good weather, on the turf, indoors. Let's go. Get it done. Earn that $39 million. Kansas City goes on the road to play the Chargers as an eight and a half point favorite. It's a weird line. It's a weird line. And that line opened up as a five and a half point spread, and it's up to eight and a half now. Interesting, interesting. And the the, the funny thing is that the totals come down about four points. So it's, it's a weird line. A lot of weird lines in this. I mean, I guess a lot of the lines also are being affected by the lack of the home field advantage. That's really, that's going to be something really, you know, really interesting to, to take a look at. Seattle's a four-point favorite at home against the Patriots. The Patriots, who struggled to score, got enough done, still are going to be good defensively despite all the guys that aren't playing. Let's see if Seattle can take care of business at home. They're two weeks, they have two consecutive games now at home. They have New England, and then, like I said, I believe they have Dallas the following week. New Orleans goes to Las Vegas as a six-point favorite. That's a weird line. Let's see if New Orleans can muster up that same energy two weeks in a row because they had, that's going to be the Monday night game. They had very intense, intense uh, game. And, you know, it, it, it was the marquee game of the week. If they can muster it up again and go on the road and, um, you know, stop a, a Raiders team, which... Looked good offensively. Jacobs with a monster game. So let's see what happens. Well, guys, that's going to wrap up the show for tonight. I appreciate you guys listening. Like always, tune in to the Sergio Rodriguez Show. Follow us on Instagram at the Sergio Rodriguez Show. Follow us on Twitter at the Sergio Rod Show. This is going to be something that we're going to do every week. And we're going to bring you guys some hard-hitting facts without holding back any punches. We're working on starting with our guests next week. And we'll let you know. We'll post on the Instagram and on Twitter who it will be. Until next week, take care.